I'm very pleased to be here and to speak on the occasion of Pierre's anniversary. Uh, we met first uh, in 1967 when Grotendieck introduced us to each other and Pierre gave me his first, I believe, printed paper. Was it about binomial coefficients? It was about binomial coefficients. And ever since, I think I have either read carefully or at least browsed through every single publication by Pierre and a part at least of his famous private letters on various mathematical problems addressed to various people. Probably there was a couple addressed to me even. And, uh, and uh, everything was extremely stimulating and it's a great pleasure. Uh, my uh, talk today uh, is related to several threads of thought uh, which uh, Pierre was interested at several stages of his career. And uh, very briefly, I will uh, explain um, what went into some of them. So in the introduction, I will first remind you the definition of multiple zeta values about which Professor Terrasoma spoke already at this conference. Uh, there are uh, two uh, different definitions of multiple zeta values. One is via multiple Dirichlet series. Uh, we are considering them for integers uh, at least one and the last one should be more than one for convergence or else uh, definition via iterated integrals. Uh, so I have written the beginning of the iterated integral uh, on the interval 0, 1 and the sequence of differential forms in the iterated integrals uh, consists of consecutive subsequences. You have mk time dt over t then uh, once sorry mk minus 1 time dt over t then once dt over 1, one minus t and uh, the length is then go in the in reverse direction uh, from right to left uh, if you compare them with multiple Dirichlet series. Then there are shuffle relations, relations between iterated integrals and relation between multiple series which are derived by the same, uh, essentially the same combinatorial trick expressing the fact that product of two simplices is a union of simplices uh, enumerated indexed by shuffles. And uh, these numbers uh, enter a lot of uh, higher mathematics, so to speak, including quantization in the context of Greenfield Associate, the Grotendieck Teich Miller group, mixed motifs of uh, Hodge Tate type, and so on. And uh, Pierre has written, in particular, very nice uh, notes of his uh, seminar, uh, which I read uh, carefully and with great. Um, help for what I was doing. Now, um, I want to argue that, first of all, the situation described above relates to geometry on P1, C minus 0, 1 and infinity. That's clear. dt over t and dt over 1 minus t spend the space of meromorphic differential forms with logarithmic singularities at 0, 1 and infinity. And what I want to do then is to lift uh, the picture to the upper half plane uh, where uh, P1C and 0, 1 infinity becomes the modular curve corresponding to the group gamma 0, 4 and CASPs respectively. And uh, the differential forms lift to Eisenstein series of weight 2 for gamma 0, 4. And the integration path 0, 1 leads to the geodesic connecting two cusps. So uh, my suggestion is to leave to uh, consider a generalization of the initial picture along the following lines. Uh, gamma 0, 4 can be replaced by arbitrary or arbitrary congruence subgroup of SL2Z. Eisenstein series of way two are, can be replaced by arbitrary modular forms with respect to 
this group gamma, and in this talk I will focus on cusp forms which are represented in the classical polyzeta uh, setting. At the very end, if I have time, I'll say a few words about Eisenstein series, uh, but very incomplete. And finally, the iterated integrals will be taken along geodesics connecting two arbitrary cusps, not necessarily the images of zero and one. Now, here we land directly in a very classical theory where uh, the integration of cusps forms along geodesics connecting to five to cusps was considered. This is the theory of classical modular symbols of arbitrary weight and theory of uh, values at integer points of critical strip of some very classical uh, Dirichlet series. Uh, so th the subject of this talk then can be ta called uh, iterated uh, modular symbols. Instead of usual modular symbols, iterated modular symbols. Uh, let me first of all, uh, well, in preparing the way of writing this, uh, I've sort of oscillated between two modes, one of that of writing commutative diagrams and another of writing concrete formal series and decided for the second mode of description of the same subject matter. So what I uh, will uh, now very briefly survey is uh, I will show that if one replaces a simple integral from a point A to a point B of a one holomorphic one form on a Riemannian surface, if one replaces it by certain expressions in terms of iterated integrals, then uh, uh, a nice and uh, very useful way of thinking about this infinite sequence of iterated integrals is just to organize them into a non-commutative generating series and then trying to see what for this series replaces additivity, variable change, and so on. So this is just very elementary and essentially well-known situation. So the uh, notation will be as follows. Uh, we consider a connected Riemann surface, the structure sheaves, the sheaf of holomorphic one forms. Then there will be V. Don't, please don't take it for a manifold or anything geometric. It's a fixed or variable finite set which is used for indexing and only for indexing. I don't want it to be totally ordered, so I won't use one from one to n, but just the set V, okay? So I will have a finite family of holomorphic one forms on X, uh, maybe locally, local forms, and uh, non-commuting free formal variables, both sets octet, uh, uh, indexed by V, and the formal linear combination capital omega uh, with this AV. I will assume that AV commute with constants, functions, one forms, but generate a free associative algebra between themselves. And finally, consider a piecewise smooth path, gamma. Then I will define what I will call the total iterated integral of omega along gamma, and it will be a formal series of the type uh, described here. Uh, integral is taken over the usual simplex, and if gamma and gamma prime with the same ends are homotopic, then uh, J uh, depends only, uh, then uh, essentially J depends only on such homotopy class of gamma. And it is a formal series starting with one uh, in the uh, associ uh, ring of uh, associative, free associative series generated by A. Uh, I will often use another notation where, oops, <laughs> sorry, what, what has happened? Oh yeah, I forgot to do this, sorry. Sorry. Okay, another notation where uh, I will use variable points along gamma and explicitly write it as j depending on omega and with a lower integration limit a and upper integration limit variable z along gamma. 
so that it should just remind you the usual integral from A to Z uh, of, of one form. But there are these formal coefficients there. Okay. Uh, so if U is connected and simply connected, this is an, uh, and uh, gamma is in U, this is an unambiguously defined element of this ring. Otherwise, it's a multivalent function of Z. And of course, the first standard proposition is, the first standard statement is that D is a, uh, as a function of Z of upper limit satisfies the uh, Nonlinear, uh, the linear differential equation of this type. In other words, it is a horizontal multisection of the flat connection on the series, on the ring of formal series, uh, with coefficients in OX, or if you wish, in a constant trivial uh, vector bundle of infinite dimension over X. So this is the first statement. And the second statement is uh, multiplicativity. So this last formula should be read as a multiplicative version of the usual additivity of our integral with respect to uh, putting together two paths from A to B and to B or from B to Z or something like that. A to Z and B to A. Uh, you should just remember in which order the things contract first downstairs and then upstairs. If you put it in, in uh, other direction, they will not. And this, of course, follows from the fact that this is a horizontal section. Uh, of course, uh, if you have a, for example, closed oriented contractible contour in U, then you have a generalization of this formula uh, showing this kind of property. Okay, so this is a multiplicative version of the additivity of simple integrals with respect to the union of integration paths. Okay. Another proposition is, uh, again, again, sorry. Another proposition is that um, series which we get using such kind of uh, integration are not arbitrary series in A, but they are multiplicative group-like series. If you consider the uh, co-multiplication on the uh, ring of series in AV, this usual definition delta, then uh, the multiple, the total integral, iterated integral, uh, satisfies the formula which um, is displayed here. And there are two basic claims. First of all, that this identity, if you write it down in terms of coefficients, then it uh, encodes all shuffle relations between the iterated integrals of these forms omega v taken separately. So you write down the formal series, you look at the fixed coefficients, and you just encode in this way all shuffle relations. And claim two is that uh, in my analogy between uh, usual integrals and iterated integrals, it uh, should be considered as corresponding to the fact that the usual integrals are additive with respect to what you integrate. It's not quite obvious how to explain it, but it can be explained. And anyway, this is the usual, the, the uh, useful way to think about it, okay? And then there is an easy statement of functoriality. Well, there are, of course, more general statements, but I will use only this one. Suppose that you have an automorphism of your Riemannian surface, which satisfies the following property, that uh, the lift maps map on homomorphic one forms, maps into itself the linear space spanned by my omega. So there is a constant matrix, G star omega V, uh, uh, G V U, uh, which expresses this uh, lifting. Then we can define the dual uh, matrix acting upon variable A U. And then the formula says that, uh, that uh, if I 
replace my gamma by the image of this gamma with respect to G instead, and then produce the iterated integral. Instead, I can take my old iterated integral and, uh, G la and apply G lower star to A's instead of doing this to the, mm, instead of applying G upper star to omegas. This is a multiplicative version of the variable change formula which I will be using. And the use of it should be clear. In my context, the upper half plane, of course, will be considered with the uh, automorphism, with a lot of automorphism acting upon it. So I will have to, in order to um, uh, keep in check the automorphic properties, I will have to apply various elements of SL2Z and things like that. Okay. Okay, now uh, I will introduce the class of one forms that I will be integrating on the upper half plane. I will call a one form omega a form of modular type if it can be represented as a product of uh, f of z dz where f of z is a modular form of some weight with respect to a finite index subgroup gamma and uh, a power of z. Uh, now here it would be better to write z divided by i power s minus one and, and to explain that the z divided by i power s minus one is normalized in the usual way on the uh, imaginary half line. But uh, I will be just a little bit sloppy here forgetting about these powers of i or, or in putting it into other places of the form. Okay. So uh, this will be one form of modular type. And if I have chosen such a form omega, then I can reconstruct S, which will be called the Mellon argument of it, and the respective modular form uniquely. Uh, I can reconstruct them from omega. And then I will say that omega is a form of cast modular type if the associated F is a cast form. And mm, here is the reminder of uh, how uh, GL2, GL plus 2Z or even GL plus 2R actually acts upon functions on H. The action of weight k is written here. There are uh, one or two different normalizations that are used in the literature. I will choose this one. And uh, so the F is of weight k for the group gamma if it is invariant with respect to the section of weight k and it is a cusp form is if it vanishes at cusp. Okay. Now I will remind some facts uh, about the classical non-iterated theory in order to show what I want to generalize. Uh, so Ordinary non-iterated integrals from our vantage point furnish linear in AV terms of, of the whole iterated story. And for one forms of cast model of type, the basic theory of ordinary integrals consists of the following parts. So this is a reminder of the classical theory. First of all, uh, there is a general a classical Mellon transform of f of z. So here I am considering the integral lambda depending on variable uh, Mellin argument, f of z as z as s minus one dz. I will assume for simplicity, there are much more general cases, but for simplicity I will assume that the group gamma is normalized by this element. Uh, and uh, mm, then uh, slightly changing this element, multiplying it by Dividing it by square root of n, we get an involution in S k gamma. And the claim is that uh, lambda f s satisfies the usual uh, equations, functional equation of Riemannian type corresponding to reflection from k. So s corresponds to k minus s, and, and uh, there are additional uh, exponents be before this. Critical strip uh, is by definition, lies by definition when real part S is between zero and K. And mm, what I will do, I will define later 
the total iterated Mellon transform and extend this functional equation to it. That's one thing that will be done. Um, another story is related with the classical space of modular symbols. Uh, here, I would like to, to be able to do much more than I actually can do, and it seems to be an interesting challenge. Anyway, in the classical space, in the classical case, the real space of modular symbols MSK gamma is the space of R linear functionals on the space of cusp forms spanned by Shimura integrals. So I'm taking uh, integration roots from any cusp to another cusp, say along geodesics for simplicity. It should be actually along geodesics uh, at the very ends, but it doesn't matter. And uh, Mellon arguments will be integers lying inside the critical strip. Mm, I think from M to K, sorry, not to K minus, to K, not to K minus one. And three descriptions of this linear space are known. There is a combinatorial description uh, which is, uh, in which the space of linear functionals is just given by uh, generators and relations. Uh, there is a geometric uh, description uh, due to Shakurov initially where uh, it appears as a part of middle cohomology of the respective Kugasato variety. Actually, uh, nowadays it's much better to work not with Kugasato but with manifolds uh, M bar 1N or 1K and uh, probably with uh, base space extended, extended to the curve X gamma, but anyway. So it is a Cartesian relative direct product of the universal elliptic curve over the respective modular curve. And uh, this description, of course, makes it very clear that we are speaking about, uh, uh, about uh, Hodge structure and the usual uh, periods of integrals. And there is the third a cosmological description due to Shimura, where the space appears as a dual space to the cuspidal part of the group cosmology. Uh, group, the group in question is just gamma, and the coefficient module is just the k minus second symmetric power of the basic representation of a cell. So this is pure algebra. And what I can do is to show that the cohomological description admits a sensible iterated extension. Actually, it would be very nice to have uh, the similar effects for one and two, and it leads to interesting generalization of the story, which are not finished yet. Okay. Then, in the classical theory, we know... Oh, my God. In the classical theory, we know... Mm, an expression of Mellon transform in terms of Dirichlet series, which is essentially the uh, raison d'etre of uh, introducing the Mellon transform. So whenever S, real part of S is large enough, then uh, Fourier coefficients of uh, your cusp form, okay, I'm assuming that uh, at infinity uh, the, the um, Infinity is fixed by the total subgroup of, of uh, translations Z generated by Z goes to Z plus one. So in this case, the uh, coefficients of the respective Fourier series of F are the coefficients of its Mellon transform uh, as that of Dirichlet series, formal Dirichlet series. Or and I will show that uh, the components of the total Mellon transform about which I spoke at the very beginning at integral, at integral points of the critical multidimensional strip can be expressed also as multiple Dirichlet series of a special form. So this raise, will raise a natural question about can one um, generalize the harmonic shuffle relations, the relations corresponding to the combinatorics of Dirichlet series to this case, and I will say a few words about it. Okay. And here is the major uh, unsolved problem. If gamma is a congruence of group, then there is a very well-known famous expression 
uh, famous property of those Dirichlet series that are eigenfunctions for all Hick operators, and this corresponds to the fact that lambda admits an Euler product of well-known form. The major unsolved problem is to extend this to the iterated complex, or at least to, to find what kind of interaction between Dirichlet series and uh, multiple Dirichlet series and Euler factors there is, if there is anything. Okay, now I will briefly explain what I can do and what I cannot do in the iterated context. It, following the same uh, pattern as I did when I was explaining what is known in the classical case. So instead of one form in the iterated context, I am of course considering a finite, uh, first of all, a finite sequence of cusp forms with respect to gamma and uh, the respective finite sequence of Mellon arguments and uh, define the iterated Mellon transform in the obvious way. I will be integrating only from I infinity to zero in this definition. So only between two cusps corresponding to infinity and zero. And uh, this is in, these are individual iterated Mellon transforms and of course they are encoded in this formal series of non-commuting variables. And to define this, I will be considering a finite family of cusp forms, numbered as usual by my, uh, by my um, finite set V and the respective complex numbers, million arguments, and the total million transform will be given then by the usual formal series in A's. Okay, and the theorem about funct the functional equation is this. So assume that the space spent by Fv is stable with respect to that involution which I denoted Gn earlier, and let Kv be the weight of Fv, and then uh, we have a very similar equation which is very similar to the one which I have been writing before that. Uh, the essential point is that the argument SV is now replaced by this difference KV minus SV. Please recall that this is a vector and this is a vector. And everything else, this small, uh, small uh, exponentials and things like that is encoded in the appropriate linear transformation of formal variables AV. One can easily calculate it knowing the details of the picture. Actually, what would be very interesting, so I have something, uh, a formal function which depends on many complex variables, SV, and I get just functional equation with respect to one reflection as a classical case. What would be interesting is to understand whether one can complete it by other formal reflections with respect to other hyperplanes, like in case of some vial group and so on. I cannot produce a definitive statement of this kind, but I'm pretty sure that it should be there. Okay. So the second story is an attempt to define uh, the iterated version of modular symbols, generalizing the third of the classical three different definitions of the space of modular symbols, namely corresponding to, uh, uh, to H1 one, uh, homology. Now there, I was considering homology of the modular group subgroup gamma with coefficients in a module which was a just linear space, so, so a commutative module. And here, of course, it will be replaced by a non-commutative group upon which gamma acts, and therefore the cohomology group will be kind of cohomology set, uh, which should be defined in the usual context. Fortunately, since I will be considering here only one-dimensional cohomology, so I'm just reminding the standard definitions of non-commutative one so I have a group B 
a group N upon which uh, G acts from the left, then this is the definition of cocycles, and some cocycles are cohomologous, homolo homo so equivalent, and H1 is the quotient of the set with respect to this relation equivalence of equivalence. Uh, in the case of iterated Shimura integrals, which I will be considering, uh, the group, relevant group G, will be the projectivization, so the subgroup sitting in PSL2Z, uh, projectivization of gamma. <laughs> then I will have this family of Shimura differentials. So this time, uh, as opposed to the previous story, my Mellon arguments will be only integers in the respective critical strips. I do not allow general S. Mm, and I will take, for simplicity, it's not necessary, but it's reasonable to take for FV a basis of uh, the total direct sum of cusp forms of various weights that enter the picture. Uh, so such forms span a P gamma invariant space. We put, uh, d denote by omega capital the respective uh, formal differential, and denote by n, so this will be the analog, the, this will play, play the role of the coefficient uh, group up there, denote by n the group of, uh, group-like elements of this ring of formal series. And left action, I need a left action of group upon the group of coefficients, it's functoriality action G star, which I defined earlier. So I, I have a setup. And now the theorem. First of all, uh, if I consider a, a variable element of my group P gamma and uh, consider a map from P gamma to pi, so pi is former n, uh, given by integral by iterated, total iterated integral from gamma A to A. A is a variable point in the H bar. It is always a non-commutative cocycle. Second, its cohomology class does not depend on the choice of A, and I will call it the non-commutative modular symbol. And third, this cohomology class belongs to the cuspidal, cuspidal subset of this non-commutative cohomology. Cuspidal subset consists of those cohomology classes where restrictions, restriction on all stabilizers of gamma cusps is trivial. Uh, actually, one can reduce everything to the cohomology of the total PSL to Z and not of some subgroup of it. Uh, this is the trick that is used in classical theory as well, using uh, non-commutative Shapiro lemma. Uh, in non-commutative Shapiro lemma, one has uh, a group G and a larger group H and a left group of coefficients with respect to a smaller group which we, from which we then produce the group of coefficients for the larger group H, inducing or producing, I don't know. Uh, and then we have a canonical isomorphism of pointed sets given, which can be given explicitly. I don't give it here. Uh, in the applications to the iterate Shimura integrals, I will take for the smaller subgroup, this is my old P gamma, and for the larger subgroup, uh, PSL2Z, and for the smaller coefficient uh, group, my old pi, P, and then I will induce it for, uh, to a larger group. Now, the merit of such reduction is that PSL2Z is a very simple group. It's, it is a free product of Z2 and Z3, and here are the canonical generations, generators sigma and tau, uh, uh, of this group. And then uh, one can more or less directly appealing to the definitions, prove that uh, any iterated Shimura cycle, in fact any H1 uh, GN, belongs, uh, when I take its values and restrict just on this generator sigma tau, 
then it will be a, cup, a couple of power series x and y satisfying these two functional equations. These are, of course, iterated versions of Shimura uh, relations and Shim or shimura eichler relations. The cohomology relation between cycles can be read off from this restriction. Here is the, how the cohomology relation looks like. And the cuspidal part of the cohomology is also can be read off from, uh, from uh, this relation. On the other hand, if I have an arbitrary pair x, y like this, uh, it can be uniquely lifted, well, it can be lifted, yes, uniquely lifted to a one core cycle, which produces the respective uh, cohomology uh, element, so which is morally an integral in iterated modular symbol. That's what I can do. Uh, so some relations between iterated Shimura integrals are encoded besides shuffle relations, are encoded in this iterated Shimura relations. Uh, what is in the classical theory, one can then show that using this and Hecke operators, one can use it in two different ways, uh, uh, Shimura, Eichler relations, and Hecke operators. One way tells you that the usual integrals of Shimura forms between um, CASPs uh, it generally should produce a lot of different irrationalities or transcendences or things like that. Uh, the classical theorem, a classical theorem tells you that actually if you fix a weight in the group, there are only two linear, no more than two linearly independent transcendental periods, uh, linearly independent over the ring of algebraic numbers, uh, field of algebraic numbers. I, uh, it is considerably more that I can prove in the iterated case, and it would be very interesting to do that. Another use of eichler shimura relations plus relations uh, corresponding to Heck operators, which I cannot do in the iterated case at all, uh, tells us that coefficients of modular forms uh, have very explicit, very interesting elementary representations via sum of sums over matrices with a given determinant and things like that. I also don't know how to produce some kind of this property in the iterated version. So what I presented is a very elementary part of the theory which I hope exists in more refined variant. Uh, I should probably, yeah, I should probably tell one more part of the story which is desirable but which is not done. Uh, in fact, in the uh, Shakurov's description, instead of integrating one forms, Shimura one forms over upper half plane, we are integrating uh, holomorphic volume forms over the respective Kugasata variety. Uh, they are not one forms, and therefore the uh, easiest part of the theory of iterated integrals is not applicable to this context we, when we are living on the Kugasata variety. However, the uh, complete chance theory of iterated integrals is applicable in this context. So in principle, what I can do is to consider this Kugasata variety and to consider uh, the chance iterated integrals of forms which are not necessarily one forms. I will be getting uh, forms or cohomology classes in the respective um, loop space of Kugasato or, or of M bar 1n or something like that. And morally, this is a refined version of iterated uh, modular symbols which fully deserves to be started. I'm doing now just that, but I don't have any definitive result to report about it. Okay. Now, the next part of the classical story, uh, which uh, explains you that uh, that instead of the usual Dirichlet series in the classical case, we get some kind of multiple Dirichlet series here. 
So I need some notation. So let's start of the family of one forms on H, which are explicitly represented as, um, as Fourier series. Here are the notation. And when there is such a family, I will explicitly introduce the respective uh, formal, at least Dirichlet series. Forget temporarily about convergence. What you should pay attention to is this. Uh, the Dirichlet part of this story, let me try to, yeah, to do it this way. So here we have a product of powers of uh, an increasing sequence of integers. Forget about the exact powers and everything. And here, I have the respective Fourier coefficients of the initial series I've been considering. Now, what is important here is that this index n1, n2, n3 that appears upstairs is the difference of the consecutive uh, numbers that appear downstairs. It's not the product of Cs corresponding to n1, n1 plus n2, and so on, n1 plus nk. This is what makes the problem of producing analog of harmonic shuffle relations uh, more problematic than in the classical case, but I still can do something about it, but not quite definitive. Okay, and now the theorem is that, yeah, also you should remember that we are interested, actually, the z will be the upper limit of the integration of my iterated integral. And whenever z is not zero, it's okay. Whenever it is in upper half plane, the exponential terms up there, e power 2 pi and, and 1 plus plus and k, z produces the convergence, so it is okay. But I am interested in integrating from zero to, to i infinity and formally putting z equal to zero, of course, produces generally uh, 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 divergences, which should be uh, considered carefully. Now, yeah. Yes, integrals in the critical strip. Yes. In the theorem, of course, in the definition, I can do whatever I wish, but in the theorem, I am in the critical strip. And uh, here is the expression of the partial iterated integrals as a linear combination of the respective Dirichlet series. So basically, you see here i infinity and z, and here you see this z here, and the respective j's and omegas. And then one should, uh, this is formal, so one should uh, study the convergence here. And the following proposition shows that, so I, I just uh, omit the part explaining what kind of convergence we, we have, but the following proposition shows that one can use the trick with functional, Mellin functional equations in the same way as in the classical case in order to assure convergence in the cases when it is absent by integrating not from zero to infinity, but from infinity to some point in the middle, and then again from this point to the middle to infinity. And we have this classical expression in the multiplicative version. So you have uh, some control on convergence, even in the cases when formal uh, inserting uh, z equal to zero is impossible. Uh, that is the content of the remark two, and the remark one, of course, is that we can mix different a weights. It doesn't matter which weight we are weights we are considering. And in the mm, uh, picture, in the virtual Chen iterated integrals picture, I can mix various weights because there are maps of Kugasato varieties projecting those with larger k to those with smaller k, and, and so I will get forms of, not necessarily volume forms, but uh, holomorphic forms of arbitrary dimension, and I can mix them in the Chen version as well. Okay, now 
the analog of harmonic shuffle relations is of not great worth as it states here, except for it shows uh, in what additional direction the story should be generalized in order to have a more complete picture. Uh, here is a formal definition. Uh, I will start with what I will call coefficients data C of depth K. And this is just a family of numbers indexed by in this way, which is explained here. And if I have such coefficients data of depth K, uh, I will construct the formal multiple Dirichlet series associated to the C with arguments S1, SK. And this is the definition. So basically, in my initial picture, I have noted that if I have here u1, u2, and so on, then the coefficients that I have to take into account, c, depend on the consecutive differences. And in this generalization, I'm, I allow them to depend on arbitrary pair, ui and uj, and probably also uh, on the places where this pair sits. So it's more general than what I get in the, mm, in the mm, my, in my multiple Dirichlet series. And C just, uh, the notion of C of coefficients data just axiomatizes this story. So it's easy to see that the usual multiple Dirichlet series correspond to one of the choices of C. And um, the series that I've produced uh, in order to calculate iterated integrals of Shimura integrals correspond to another choice of C. And basically, what I'm saying is that this larger class of Dirichlet series is closed with respect to generalized shuffle relations. I'm just explaining that, uh, that uh, I can define multiplication of different coefficients data depending on, um, depending on a shuffle. And uh, the addition of the respective Dirichlet arguments depending on a shuffle uh, such that we will have the following uh, statement. Product of two L's corresponding to different coefficients data will be a linear combination of some other coefficients, uh, L corresponding to some other coefficients data. The moral is that uh, it seems at the moment at least that although the di multiple Dirichlet series produced from Shimura integrals do not form a closed system with respect to these shuffle relations. But uh, these shuffle relations suggest that I should introduce in the, the initial picture some more general uh, iterated integrals uh, and Dirichlet series corresponding not only just to usual uh, modular forms, but also to Rankine uh, products of such forms and things like that. There are interesting subsets that produce closed systems of uh, Dirichlet series, and this should be started. And finally, I'll just say uh, two words about uh, how to generalize the initial associated, associator picture to this context by dealing with the very simplest case of Eisenstein series. So before that, uh, I was uh, speaking only about cusp forms. So here, I will assume that uh, the integration limits of the iterated integral of respect to one forms are allowed to be logarithmic singularities of the form omega, then generally, these integrals diverge at the ends, they must be regularized, and the dependence of the regularization is just a version of the Linz base point at, uh, at infinity. So I will present it in the following way. Mm, so let A be some point of my Riemannian surface, 
z a variable point, and I will introduce explicit notation for uh, residues of my omega, my forms. Uh, small r residues are numbers, and capital R's are uh, linear forms on A views. Uh, then I'll choose a local parameter t, and local t a will be a local branch of the logarithm real on t on positive real values of r plus. And uh, then the definition. Now I will take for my in, for my basic object not the iterated, not the series produced of iterated integrals, but a solution of the respective differential equation. And I will call such a local solution normalized at a point A with respect to, to a choice of TA if it is of the following form. So the divergent part is TA power RA and uh, the remaining part is just a holomorphic section in a neighborhood of A which uh, takes value really one there. Please notice again that we are in, in in a ring of non-commuting series, so the order is essential. It's kt and not tk. So uh, the claim is that the normalized solution exists and is unique. Locally, it depends only on this tangent vector. This is Pierre's uh, point, uh, base point at infinity. And uh, this is the formula explaining you what happens if you change this vector. Essentially, you multiply your old story by a number power Ra. And now, uh, in the general case, when both ends uh, allow logarithmic singularities, the analog of our former total uh, iterated integral series is what I will call uh, following physicists the scattering operator. So given two points with normalizing data uh, dated them and uh, in one form with at most logarithmic singularities and the homotopy class of paths from A to B avoiding other singularities, uh, we can construct uh, uh, two normalized solutions at one end and another end and divide one by another. Again, the order is essential. And the uh, resulting formal series I will call the scattering operator, whereas its coefficients will be the regularized iterated integrals in this case. Uh, so the example of Greenfield's uh, associator is obtained classically in this way. So what is in my notation G, J01 tilde is Drinfeld's uh, associator in this situation. And uh, I propose to study, but I did not yet do it as yet, the situation where my Riemannian surface is a modular curve corresponding to a congruent subgroup. Uh, and uh, the form are made out of a basis of Eisenstein series of way 2 uh, So they will produce integrals of the third kind on my modular curve. And it is very well known that differences of two cusps in this situation are always of finite order in the Jacobian. So these integrals will be glo globally logarithmic, so to, sp to, so to speak. So the situation when you push it down from the upper half plane to your modular curve, it will be a very, very algebraic and even arithmetic situation. And I suggest that it is an interesting, arithmetically interesting generalization of uh, Drinfeld's associator, which will correspond to the simplest case when the group gamma is gamma zero four. And I stop here. Thank you. Sorry.
uh, yeah, I, the, 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 the latest story, the, uh, the story with cusp form is pure. So it corresponds to pure motifs, whereas the case of Eisenstein series, of course, correspond to mixed motifs, but I do not know exactly which motifs they are. Pierre probably can guess right away, but I don't know. I don't know. This should be studied, of course. Yeah, well, here local system should be then replaced by this large non-commutative, uh, by, by, well, local system or whatever corresponding to this large non-commutative uh, group. So I do not know whether it will produce any, uh, any um, simplification or, or, or rather complications. I'm not sure. I don't know. This was, by the way, one of the reasons I decided to write it in as explicit way as possible in order to avoid foundational problems at this stage at least. Yeah, well, something is given by these tricks with Mellin uh, transforms, uh, which produces, yeah, 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 yeah. But as I said, there should be more functional equations corresponding to some type of whale group. <laughs> 